He's having a bad hair decade. Please welcome Lorne Elliott. Ah, the weather is a worry here, my goodness gracious. Uh, cold winter, everybody was saying that, cold winter. And when people from Winnipeg started talking about a cold January, they were saying, good Lord, you know, uh, absolute zero, that's, uh, you know, <laughs> all molecules. All, well, they, they had that, uh, the, the propane, the natural gas went off in, uh, what was the name of the town, Stonewall, was it? Uh, yeah, honestly, in the middle of uh, winter, you don't want that. You never find yourself hoping for the heat to go off there. Uh, it, it happened to us in Quebec there. That's where I'm from, Quebec. No, it's not my fault. That's just where I'm born. And <laughs> Mom was from there. Dad was from there. I said, what the hell? Why not? You know? <laughs> but, uh, you know, it happened to us. Hydro Quebec, the, the power went out, right? And, uh, well, I don't know about your, your, uh, your companies here, but uh, Hydro Quebec left into action and immediately rolled up the sleeves and sent out a press release. And... Uh, <laughs> And you know, that only keeps you warm so long, huh? <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. It, it was a butte. It was a doozy. It was a dilly. This press release, it was uh, the reason for the power failure was uh, uh, the cold snap. <laughs> so, so it's, it's nice to know we'll always have uh, light and heat as long as it's sunny and warm. Huh? <laughs> Uh, weather in Winnipeg. They got, I got kind of a pride here I've always found in Winnipeg in the cold, you know, the coldest corner on earth. Yeah? Portage and Maine. Portage and Maine. First time I came here, I had to go down and see that. Portage. I was, I was pronouncing it from Quebec. I, I was pronouncing it portage. I'm sorry about that. Uh, uh, portage. Quel faux pas. <laughs> <laughs> or as I guess I should say here, Fox Pass. Huh? <laughs> That's unfair. No. <laughs> but portage, of course, is a French word. It means carrying a canoe 36 miles across some jeezly bog in the middle of summer, carrying 14,000 pounds of wet, stinking beaver pelts to sell to a Scottish trader. Yeah, I'll give you $11 for the lot. <laughs> the part of our heritage there. I'm walking down towards the uh, corner of Portage Main there, and uh, walking down Portage Avenue, and uh, a couple of things are happening. Fewer and fewer people, the closer I get there, I think. I'm watching people slip on the ice, which I do find cruelly amusing, I'll say that right now. <laughs> I, I feel we don't need a national ballet in this country as long as we have icy side. Well, now you're like, ha! <laughs> But fewer and fewer people, the closer I get to that corner. I didn't know this about people from Winnipeg. You're like prairie dogs. You go underground all winter. So you got that. <laughs> they used to call it Portage Place. Uh, Winnipeg Square, as I was called down there. Uh, under, underneath. the uh, yeah, uh, uh, People live down there all year. They <laughs> see people show up in February in the food court in their bathrobes. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know this. I, I was just standing across the portage, and, and uh, there was a door down to the food court, the other side, other uh, side of the street. So I hop over one of these cement medians they got there to. <laughs> figure in, you know. And I'm heading across, and uh, I slip on the ice, and suddenly it's not as amusing. <laughs> and I remember this particular, uh, this particular slip. Because uh, I remember thinking, I remember saying to myself, uh, don't step on that chunk of ice or you're going to end up head over heels. Huh? And, then this, uh, and then this other voice in my head goes, no, oh, head over heels is the way you are normally. <laughs> for, this, for this idiom to be more exact, <laughs> it should really say heels over head. Which is all very fine, but what I should have been thinking was, don't step on the chunk ice. Because <laughs> you're slipping on the ice. If I fell on this stage, it would hurt. But it's not like an ice slip. You slip on the ice, your feet just go whoop, and you're up there with the point of your hip just ready to take the full brunt of the weight of your fall on some very hard ice. And you hesitate. You go up and, uh, and, and it gives you time to think, you know. And what you're thinking is, well, this is going to hurt. <laughs> and, and you find yourself devising these really pathetic strategies. You know? <laughs> I, I'm going to twist around in midair. <laughs> I'm going to flex my right buttock. <laughs> and I'm going to bounce gracefully to my feet. <laughs> Twisted too far, landed on huh, my tailbone. 
That sound was like the pain that drove me eight feet in the air now. <laughs> eight feet in the air with my arms going like a windmill, my legs going like this cartoon character, still describing the trajectory of the slip fall. And I'm thinking, oh, I gotta get this out of this Greek hell of a fall I'm in. <laughs> and I figure I'm just gonna land and slip again. Uh, but some fool of a town official had spread some salt there. <laughs> so I hit the ground with my legs going around at a dead sprint <laughs> toward this glass door. <laughs> and there was a guy, a Winnipegger, great, very cool, behind the glass door, armload of groceries. He just went, ole. <laughs> huh? yeah. So I entered. <laughs> And as soon as I hit that warmth, my glasses fogged up. <laughs> but I'm still running. <laughs> now, I don't know if you've ever fallen down a really long set of stairs. <laughs> well, it is nothing compared to falling down an escalator that's coming up towards you. stairs, no matter how long, you will eventually get to the end of them. <laughs> Escalator, pack a lunch. Uh, <laughs> the only time I ever remember, midwinter, praying for a power failure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>